I'm Jim Collison, and this is the Clifton Strengths Podcast Season 2, recorded on March 21st, 2023. In this Clifton Strengths Podcast Series, we'll look at the Clifton Strengths for Leaders Report one theme at a time, and today's theme is Achiever. If you're listening live and you don't see the chat, there's a link to it right above me. Love to have your questions a little bit later in chat. Or if you're listening after the fact on the podcast or on YouTube, you can send us an email with your questions. Send it to coaching at gallup.com. Dr. Jacqueline Robinson is our host today. She works as a senior learning and development consultant and joined me for season one of the Clifton Strengths podcast, where we looked at the book Well Being at Work, for which she contributed most of Appendix One, maybe all of Appendix One. Jacqueline, always great to be with you. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. We are spending some time today talking about Achiever. We're going to get some stuff done during this uh, session. We have We're making moves. Full disclosure, <laughs> you have it number one. Let's talk about that. Give us a little intro on it. All right. So if you have Achiever High, you work hard and possess a great deal of stamina. You take immense satisfaction in being busy and productive. Mm. Yeah, and you know, the working hard mantra, not just reserved for achiever, we all work hard, mm-hmm. right? Doing the things that we're, that, that we're doing. But I think that's one of those, uh, I like the idea of, of stamina, stick to it in this, getting things done, checking stuff off, right? All those mm-hmm. kind of all those things that we say. We've been spending the season talking about it in the context of leadership. So we have the brand new Clifton Strengths for Leaders report helps and hinders and some action items in it. But let's talk about the power of this theme in a leadership role. What would you say? Um, I think you kind of teased it out. It was, it was great that you, you know, even prefaced it to say a lot of people work hard. Yeah. Someone with achiever high loves working hard. There's a lot of joy that comes from that versus like, okay, I want this goal. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, gonna, to, you know, tackle it, but might not be fun on the journey. This person's like, yes, let's go. Let's, let's check some boxes. So this leader is energized by setting professional goals. If we're thinking about the workplace. So as a leader of an organization, they can keep the company moving towards organizational performance and industry success Mm. um, through that energy that they have. It's like, Oh, we've got this. They can bring a lot of excitement or maybe hope for those goals that they can achieve Mm. um, and keep people moving. I love that clarification, by the way, just as you, as you say that, because they, they're successful in long, you know, working hard at this thing, checking things off, like Mm -hmm. they enjoy it, they'll do it longer. But I love, I I get the sense when we talk about of, of, you know, in leadership role of creating like a vacuum, a vortex behind them as they're moving forward, they're pulling, kind of pulling people along, right? That energy, that that, that drive those things that, again, lots of themes have this, right. But it's this, Mm -hmm. this in in getting tasks done, but not just for themselves. Maybe this is where we think of that me to we, the jump, the maturity jump is not just getting my own task list done, but how am I using this theme to pull others along in the process and help them get things done? Would you, would you add anything to that? That's a great way of putting it. Um, because the joy is in the work itself yeah. and other people might work really hard and the joy is being motivated by something different, the purpose, the consumer, whatever, um, whatever that might be. And so I love that vortex yeah. metaphor that you used because they can pull people in and help them find maybe some joy or energy in the work itself mm-hmm. as they're moving towards that goal. And, um, Sometimes they'll need that gentle nudge to celebrate once they hit the goal because they might already be moving ahead. But <laughs> um, yeah, they can help them find joy in the work. Yeah, we uh, we're spending some time thinking about how these this theme can lead others and help be helpful in that. What else? What else? How else can it fit in and and really pull people forward? Um, well, they can inspire others to action. So mm-hmm. even if they are not doing this um, consciously they can role model the behaviors Mm. that help set the pace for the work day or for the quarter. And when that's coupled with just their innate enthusiasm for getting things done, then it can drive others to naturally start to maybe match their pace or um, amplify their pace and potentially get just as excited about the goals and tasks. 
So just a moment ago, we talked about how they might do this with more intention, but unintentionally, just being around the workplace, hustling and bustling, they might be that role model because they're role modeling the behavior. Mm. Um, and when they have that joy and energy that they're getting from it, other people go, ooh, I want a taste of that. I want to get yeah. on board. I love that maturity model, though, of thinking when you talk about setting a pace, that doesn't mean their pace is the best yes. pace, right? And we think yes. about leaders of of understanding who's around them, what their natural pace is, but to continue mm -hmm. to set a pace. I, I was running a half marathon, or I was running a full marathon, and it, a, a one time, and a, a bunch of half marathoners caught up, or I caught up with them, and they're really struggling. I'm like, come and finish with me. Like, come and finish with me. Love it. And I was like, hey, I'll I'll help set this pace that we can all achieve, right? And it yes. slowed me down just a little bit, but it brought them in. And so I think we have to we have to think through that sometimes for for us achievers. That again, that Big me time. to we, right? How am I how am I pulling that in? Would Would you add yeah. be before we move on to hinders? Anything else you want to add to that? Uh, I I think that was so well said. Being really cognizant of the pace of other people is the best way to achieve team goals versus trying to to make everyone live up to your pace, which yeah. isn't. It might not be attainable. Yeah, <laughs> for not most attainable. People. Now you've just burned yeah. them out. Good job. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Now you have no one. <laughs> it's just um, you again, which maybe you yeah. like, but that that if you're going to bring people, I think, uh, successfully along, you've got to maybe figure out what that is. Right. Mm -hmm. Spend some time saying, "Hey, what's the right pace for this team, or what's the right pace for individuals on this team? How, how do I, how, how do we set things up in a way that takes advantage of the natural pace of individuals?" In to there? your point, um, when we think about achiever being an executing domain under the executing domain, I think you just did a, a great job of showing how it can use how you can use achiever for strategic thinking and relationship building, mm -hmm. um, thinking about how the people are best suited to get something done. So, yeah, no, I like yeah. it. Yeah, And then Getting... how do you want to influence them towards action? What, where are they finding joy? What, mm -hmm. what is the motivation behind them getting the work done so that they can, mm -hmm. it can achieve alongside you. Getting the people done through work. You know, that's kind of, right kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, let's talk a little bit about it hindering. How could this theme hinder the leadership of others? Focusing more on work than workplace relationships. Um, I think that's a big one. So when, it, when you do that, it makes it more difficult to get a pulse on employee engagement and well-being. Plus you might have employees that are starting to question whether they're just working for work's sake and it's busy work or it's purpose driven. And if they're not having conversations with that leader to highlight what it is that they're doing and why, then that becomes questionable too. So now they might be burned out, their well-being might be suffering, and they're confused or maybe questioning what the what it is that they're doing and why. This week we're publishing. Um, so this week it's March twenty first, uh, twenty twenty three. So this week Already. we're I know I'm crazy. We're producing some um, a, a paper on burnout, some things we've been talking about. 20 years ago, we talked about work being a workaholic. Again, uh, an English kind of definition on this of thinking through the uh, working too much, right? And mm -hmm. and and yet, I think that's that that concept has shifted to this idea. The outcome one was the was the action. Now we're thinking about the outcome of that into burnout, and so I think it's important. For leaders, not only their own well-being, right? Thinking through, hey, how is back to that idea of pace? How is my mm -hmm. pace? Is in it sustainable? And then, it, am I pulling others along in a way that's sustainable? And then, mm -hmm. how can I, how can I create an atmosphere where they can all be successful for whatever that, whatever those outcomes are for them? And then realizing, I think there's specialized times, like I'm probably in one of those right now. This is not going to last forever. I need to create a pace that's a little bit faster than it normally would be, knowing that at some point it's going to pull back, right? Even for myself yes. and for those teams. And when it is done, you said this a second ago, to make sure we stop and spend some time to celebrate, to recognize, right? Yes. Those, those, those are, put some energy back into the team. I don't know, anything else? That's right. Oh, anything else? Oh, but hold on. Let me, before we forget... We think about the four needs of followers in this, right? Hope, stability, compassion, and trust. Yes. Where does where does achiever fit into that, do you think, into that model? I could see trust. 
they trust that the leader is going to help them hit performance goals or they trust that the leader is going to drive them towards completion of strategic initiatives or whatever that outcome might be, because that's going to be top of mind for an achiever. Um, and I think it can be compassionate as well when you've got a leader that is using achiever in a way that is um, outward. It's not about me, but it's about we. And they're lending that sense of support and they're championing other folks that have goals for themselves and inspiring them and giving them those nudges. Um, and that kind of teases out what we'll get into shortly too. But I think that is, that is those two certainly come top of mind for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think even from a compassion angle, there are folks who struggle to, to get things done for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Right. And coming alongside in a leadership role and saying, let me help you, let me help you get some things done, uh, in a, in a way that's best for you, I mm -hmm. think is compassionate. I think that's, I mean, we, we just folks struggle if they didn't, we'd all, we wouldn't need any of this stuff, <laughs> right? If we didn't need to yep. understand each other in the process, um, we're spending some time thinking about report dynamics and, uh, and jamming these together with the two other reports we have Clifton strengths for sales and the Clifton strengths for manager. Jacqueline, when we think about taking the leader's report and the sales report together, what could that look like if we thought about those two ideas for success? I see this person. So as a sales leader, this individual has the stamina <laughs> to manage the sales team and support or even participate in all aspects of the sales cycle. So they can ensure that the sales team is hitting their quarterly target. And as a sales leader, they're ensuring that they're hitting their you know, annual goals mm -hmm. that the company set for them. Mm -hmm. But I feel like any time of day, not saying it's healthy, but any time of day, a, a, a sales member can, you know, email this person or ask for advice and they, they know they're going to get it um, expeditiously to support mm. them in whatever sales cycle they're in. But it also speaks to this idea of objections. You know, when you go to, when you're selling something or influencing someone and you're trying to convince them to go a direction or purchase something, and they say no. Yes. Like that's an objection, right? So um, it's that, it's, it, it can be to that stick to I know it's not really a word, but stick to of no, we got to achieve, we've got sales goals. We need to do these things. We need to overcome some of those objections and, and push forward. That may have yes. in some cultures, in some, in some areas that may be seen that, that may be a negative, like overselling or, you know, but that's part of the sales cycle is influencing in a way to, and again, we, we sell to help, mm -hmm. right. So we sell in, in, into needs type thing. We can have a long conversation just on that, but it does keep us moving to goals, right? Yeah. Keeps us moving to those sales goals. What about the manager report, manager and leaders report together. Um, this kind of goes back to what I was thinking with the four needs of followers. When managing other people, they can be really good at finding maybe a natural and engaging way to expend energy, championing others, coaching them towards their personal and professional goals that that person has set out to achieve. Um, maybe helping them put many tasks under that overall goal to help them hit it where that person can then check the boxes and see the progress they're making. And I say check the boxes more as a metaphor, but they can really help them maybe put some milestones in place. So they're getting closer and closer to that mm. goal, helping them think through what works best for them. Mm. Mm. Love that. Yeah. Just a reminder on these four action or four uh, helps, four hinders on these reports, mm -hmm. action items. Let me encourage you to do that. Like these are just, we're just trying to whet your appetite for what could be. It depends on you and your themes and what are around it. Don't let us dictate. We're just trying to give you some ideas. Uh, maybe some aha moments for you in these, but certainly we'd love to have you dig into the reports um, as well. They can be helpful for you uh, just as you spend some time talking. We'd love to have you have conversations with your manager or those that you manage just like this to see what kind of comes out. As we put a wrap on Achiever, Jacqueline, anything else that you'd add as we kind of wrap it up today? Um, well, maybe an action for Achievers can be, you know, homework for yourself. Who do you need to connect with once more? We know relationships lead to long-term health and happiness. Um, who do you need to put on your own to-do list to check in with so that you can nourish relationships 
since work is typically what uh, what drives the energy the most? And are there ways that you can encourage folks on your team to reach out to somebody today or this week and just check in with them as well? Um, so it's one really good way that you can, you know, mm -hmm. nourish your relationships, but also support the team with theirs and help them find that that best friend at work. <laughs> yeah, love it. I make leaders. If you have achiever, make achieving be getting to know your people. Yeah. <laughs> make that. Hope one you your, accept that challenge. <laughs> make that a box that you check. It's it's super important. Yes. Uh, I, I think again that maturity step of the me is what I get done. The we is what am I going to get done through people. Mm -hmm. type thing. Love that. Love that idea. Well, with that, we'll remind everyone to take it full advantage of all the resources we do have available in Gallup Access. Head out to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. Log in upper left-hand corner, choose resources, and then put achiever in that box, everything we've done around that. Go achieve that today. Get it done. Check it off if that's what it takes. Stay up to date with all the webcasts. That's the task I give you, so go check that off. Stay up to date with all the webcasts by following us on Eventbrite, gallop.eventbrite.com. Create an account there and then follow us. You'll get a notification uh, whenever we post something new. Join us on any social platform just by searching Clifton Strengths, and we're just about everywhere. So get out there and get that done. If you enjoyed it, of course, share it, hit like, subscribe, follow, all that other stuff. Leave some comments if it's on YouTube, whatever, whatever you want to do, uh, any of those, we appreciate. Thanks for listening today. If you're listening live, stay around for a little bit of post show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.